Hey guys, real quick before this one gets started, I just, just wanted to say thank you. I uh, got a lot of support on the channel recently, and I've had a few Warhammer YouTubers reach out, and so far this community has just been phenomenal. So, thank you all around to everyone for, uh, I don't know, being supportive, I guess. I don't know what the term is, and uh, I don't know if I want to accept the fact that emotions exist yet. But continuing with the theme of religious symbolism from the Slanesh video, Today's video is going to be about the different levels or tiers or natures of demons, all of which are nothing but pieces on our chessboard. They're typically broken down between four or five categories, depending on if you believe the chaos gods are demons. And if you do believe that they are just bigger demons, they would be tier five or at the very top. Um, that would only be the big five, Malal, Korn, uh, Slanesh, Zinch, and Nurgle. Nurgle being the best, obviously. Um, if they are not demons, though, they would exist outside of the rankings. Um, independent demons make up tier 4. This includes beings like Vashtor, Samus, Draknean. This tier or level is essentially filled by beings that were really, really trying to be gods um, or demigods. Uh, just below them, we have demon princes. Way back in time, we know about a demon prince by the name of Yasaril who waged war with Zinch. Among the armies of Yasaril, there were said to be many independent demons who fought to usurp the Changer of Waste. That was just included to show that there are other demons that are just not really well documented. So back on track, Tier 3 is where we start to encounter mortals, or what used to pass for mortals, with individuals known as Demon Princes. We know that in times long past that the Chaos Gods had princes undivided. We aren't sure exactly how long this happened, but we know why they no longer do this definitively. Bellacor is supposedly the only undivided Prince of Chaos in the lore, despite both Perturabo and Lorgar being undivided princes. Maybe Primarchs are different since they are, you know, already demigods before being corrupted, and we do know for a fact that some part of their souls or essence is made from warp sauce. But Bellacor was said to be uncontrollable by any of the Chaos Gods, since they all had a form of counter to one another, Bellacor within himself had a counter to the will of every single god. Outside of Bellacor, in modern 40k, demon princes are given a lot more leeway and they are hand chosen by whatever deity they are trying to gain the favor of. Demon princes, they're probably the best example of how chaos gods view mortals, because no matter how much power is imbued within them, they are nothing more than pawns. Since once the metaphorical contract has been signed, they are chained to the will of their god for all of creation. And since time does not work the same in the warp as it does in real space, demons are forced to live out all of time in both directions, past and future. The easiest way to grasp that is to simply remove the concept of a present. Since warp travel can send you forward or backwards in time depending on the tides of the warp and the skill of the navigator. Moving on from tier 3, which was the demon princes, we move on to tier 2, which is greater demons. Uh, while some accounts say that greater demons are aspects of the chaos gods, some accounts say that they are just chosen champions, or in the case of Zinch, it's, it's chaos sorcerers. Greater demons, however, still remain a solid chunk of their mortality as they are still ambitious and trying to obtain as much power as possible, or I guess clout or whatever passes for that in the war. Uh, unlike demon princes who can enter and exit reality at their choosing, greater demons require a conduit, typically in the form of a sacrifice or a ritual. Upon the completion of this ritual, which is typically a sacrifice, the sacrifice becomes a living portal for which the demon can pass through to real space, and this completely obliterates whatever mortal was foolish enough to delve into such depravities. Each of the four Chaos Gods has their own greater demons, and each one represents aspects of their Eternal Master. Starting off with Great Unclean Ones, who are the greater demons that share the most in the aspect of their Master or God, being essentially an extension of Nurgle himself. The greater demons of Nurgle act as a less powerful avatar of the Grandfather himself, and they are the only greater demons who show any kind of favor or kinship to any of the other chosen by the Grandfather. Whether it is Plague Marines, or Chaos Cultists, or even just Nurglings. Next up, we have Slanesh, or She Who Thirsts, and her greater demons, the Keeper of Secrets. 
Massive, sexy cow-crab lizard hybrids featuring any number of limbs with both crab and human appendages, and sometimes the face of a bovine or a cow. Mortals in the presence of such a greater demon are typically cursed with convulsions of both pleasure and pain, being described as both anguish and ecstasy. They regularly tempt mortals towards that ever-closing grip of chaos, and the single greatest weapon of these greater demons, however, are the mommy milkers that are almost always prominent amongst any demon of Slanesh, and this can be any number of appendage, or in this case, udders. Lords of Change are up next, and they are aspects of, believe it or not, the changer of ways himself, Zinch. Described as large bipedal avian creatures with an arcane staff in one hand, which they use to cast powerful sorceries, and a grimoire in the other. Their wings feature any number of brilliant colors, and they decorate their clothes with gold and other ornate fineries. Lords of Change are probably the least similar in the aspect of their chosen deity, as even they are unaware of the greater machinations or visage of their master, and are typically just a necessary in the cog in the gears of chain. Unique to Lords of Change, they are the only entities of the warp that have aided the races of the material world. Last up is the most straightforward of the greater demons, Bloodthirsters. Bloodthirsters are greater demons of corn, and they most closely resemble what we behind the fourth wall would see in any kind of biblical uh, iconography. Being the most straightforward of all the greater demons, corn ensures that each and every one of his chosen champions is imbued with enough power to subdue even a Primarch. Clad in ornate brass and wielding battle axes that were forged in a time before the Skull Throne and galvanized by the heat of Korn's eternal wrath alone. Inside these weapons are the essence of other greater demons bound to it by the infinite will of their deity. And finally, we have Tier 1, or Lesser Demons. Making up the majority of what would qualify as mass in the Immaterium, the vast majority of all demons are lesser demons, who are typically just gibbering slaves to anyone above their station. They are typically used as cannon fodder and are the most expendable of all demons. They are also the most likely to bridge the divide between realms and answer the calls of desperate mortals. I hope this answered some questions you might have about demons, or I just doubled your number of questions. Either way, bye.